Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, sometimes it seems like everyone has forgotten there are other things happening other than Brexit. In less than five weeks' time, there'll be a round of important domestic elections. And there's a lot up for grabs. Local elections take place on the 4th of May in England, Scotland and Wales. In England, there are elections in 34 councils with 2,370 seats up for contention. The majority are county councils, usually areas of strength for the Conservatives. Large cities where Labour usually fares better are not within this electoral cycle. Six regions of England will also hold elections for newly created combined authority mayors and there will be contests for directly elected mayors with voters in Manchester, Liverpool and the West Midlands among those going to the polls. In Scotland, every seat in all 32 councils are being contested, many of them affected by boundary changes. Since these seats were last contested, Labour lost all but one of its Scottish MPs. Meanwhile, every seat in each of Wales's 22 councils is up for election too. All but one was last elected in 2012 in what was a very strong year for Labour, though independent candidates currently hold a quarter of council seats. According to the latest calculations by Plymouth University Election Centre, the Tories are predicted to increase their tally by 50 seats, despite being in government, while Labour could be down by 50. But the dramatic story in England looks to be with the other parties, with the Lib Dems possibly winning 100 seats, while UKIP could be seeing a fall, predicted to lose 100 seats. Though the proportional system usually makes big changes less likely in Scotland, the SNP is predicted to increase both the number of seats they hold and the number of councils they control. In Wales, Labour is defending a high watermark in support, the last year's Welsh Assembly election suggests the only way is down, with all the parties making modest gains at Labour's expense. Joining me now, the BBC's very own elections guru, Professor John Curtis of the University of Strathclyde. John, good to see you again. Let's start with England. <laughs> mm -hmm. How bad are these elections going to be for Labour? Well, Labour, of course, aren't defending a great deal because this is, for the most part, rural shire England. In fact, they only control three of the councils that they're defending and they're only defending around 500 or so seats, nearly a quarter of whom are actually in one county, viz Durham. But the truth is we have to remember that Labour's position in the opinion polls has weakened over the last 12 months. And actually, if you compare the position in the opinion polls now with where they were back in the spring of 2013 when these seats in England were last fought, we're talking about a 12-point swing from Labour to Conservatives. So I think, in truth, uh, Rawlings and Thrash's estimate of 50 losses, while that may be somewhat optimistic for Labour, and, for example, of the three council areas that they control, two of them, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire, could well be lost, leaving Labour with virtually a duck, so far as council control is concerned, um, in England in these elections. What would, uh, in England, what would a Lib Dem resurgence look like? Well, that, I think, is one of the $64,000 questions. We've had this picture, really, ever since the EU referendum of the Liberal Democrats doing extraordinarily well in some local by-elections, gaining seats that they hadn't even fought the last time around, and then elsewhere, frankly, just doing no more than treading water. So I think certainly we're anticipating the Liberal Democrats will gain because you have to remember they lost a lot of ground in 2013 when they're still in coalition with the Conservatives. But how much they will gain and where I think is much more uncertain. Of course, from their point of view, a patchy performance may well be to their advantage. If indeed they do very well in some places and therefore gain seats and elsewhere don't do terribly well and you know, don't waste votes, actually they may end up doing relatively well in seats even if the overall gain in votes is relatively modest. Will the mayoral elections, they are taking place in Labour's heartland, yes. like Manchester, uh, Liverpool and so on, will that be a pretty hefty consolation prize for Labour, do you think? Well, it ought to be, certainly in Tees Valley, Greater Manchester, on Merseyside. But there is one contest that I think we're now looking at very, very closely. And that is the contest for the Mayor of West Midlands mm. between Sion Simon and Andrew Street. And in particular, if you look at what happened in the general election back in 2015, Labour were basically nine points ahead of the Conservatives across the West Midlands as a whole. You look at the swing since the uh, 2015 general election, the opinion polls, and that basically, if you add that swing to where we were uh, two years ago, West Midlands now looks like a draw. So I think in truth what Labour have to worry about above all in terms of a headline-grabbing loss 
is that West Midlands contest. And I think, you know, if they were to lose it, that is certainly going to increase the pressure further on Jeremy Corbyn mm. to kind of convince people that at some point in the not too distant future, he can turn his party's fortunes around. And they are in truth at the moment, if the opinion polls at all right, pretty dire. And the West Midlands, of course, is Birmingham as, uh, as its heart and mm -hmm. chock-a-block with uh, marginal, marginal seats. seats. Always has been. Indeed, absolutely. You can always remember election night. Marginal seats in the West Midlands were the thing to look out for. Scotland. Yes. The SNP's assaulting Labour's last remaining power base in Scotland, including the four big council has control of. The biggest prize is Glasgow. Will it take it, the SNP? Whether the SNP will actually gain control of Glasgow, I think, is uncertain. But certainly if you look at what's been happening in local government by-elections, let alone the opinion polls, you have to remember in 2012 when these seats were last fought, Labour actually did relatively well. Mm. They were only a percentage point behind, behind the SNP, who frankly did rather disappointingly as compared with lots of other recent elections. No sign of that happening this time around. All the polls still put the SNP well into the 40s. Local government by-elections have consistently found the SNP advancing and they've seen Labour dropping by double digits. So Labour, I think, are going to lose everything they currently control in Scotland. The SNP are going to become the dominant party. The question is just simply just how well they do. The other thing to look out for in Scotland, of course, there is a Conservative revival going yes. on north of the border. The Conservatives did well again in recent local government by-elections. And I think at the moment, Labour are actually expected to come third north of the border in the local elections, repeating the third that they suffered in the Holyrood election last year. And Wales. Uh, Labour, I think, is expecting to lose control of a number of councils in Wales. They have overall majority or the main party in 12 of 22 to local authorities. How bad could it be? Well, I th we're certainly expecting Labour to lose ground in the opinion polls when these seats were last fought again in 2012. Labour in the high 40s in Wales. Now they're well, uh, not much above 30%. And certainly Cardiff, for example, could well join Glasgow as no longer being a Labour fifteen. Uh, we'll also look out for Newport. I think probably some of the South Wales uh, 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 councils that Labour control. Labour probably is too well embedded. Although, of course, occasionally Ply does uh, surprise in these areas. And, of course, we should remember they managed to win the Ronda seat in the Assembly election Indeed last year. Indeed they did. Uh, Steve, Mr Corbyn's always said, I want to be judged on proper elections, on council elections as opposed to opinion polls. But even if he does as badly um, as John has been suggesting there, does it affect his leadership? I think it does on two counts. I think it will affect his own confidence. Anyone who is a human being will be affected by this and he might go into his office and be told by John McDonnell and others, stand firm, it's all right, but I think it will affect his confidence. And it inevitably contributes to a sense that this is moving to some kind of denouement at some point. In other words, while I understand the argument that he's won twice in a leadership contest, two years, uh, well, within 12 months. Mm. I wonder whether this can carry on in a fixed-term parliament up until 2020, if it were to do so. Right. So I think on two fronts it will have some impact. I'm not saying it will lead to his immediate departure. It won't. But, uh, yes, I think these things, if they're okay. as devastating as John suggests, yes, it will have an impact. And, Tom, are we looking at uh, hashtag Lib Dem fight back? $64,000 question, as John says. Uh, it would certainly seem we should be. Uh, mm. One massive reason why we're not having a general election any time soon, uh, apart from perhaps Theresa May doesn't generally believe in these things, believes in doing the right thing and pressing on, is because Tory MPs in the South West who took all those Lib Dem seats were telling number 10 they were extremely worried they were going to lose their seats back to the Lib Dems. So there is real concern and, and real potential power base. The, the Lib Dems never went away in local mm. government. They've always been there. They've got all their campaigns. They've got their activists there. It looks entirely credible to me that they'll be the uh, success story of the whole thing. Yeah. UKIP leader Paul Nuttel, uh, Isabel, says this will be the most difficult local elections his party will face pre-2020. Obviously, a bit of expectations management there. Uh, but it's unlikely to be a good time for you I UK, think they're absolutely it? right to manage expectations as I think the results will probably be absolutely horrible for UKIP and I agree with Tom about the Lib Dem threat to the Tories in fact talking to some senior figures within the Tory party earlier this week I was picking up that they are worried about potentially 30 to 40 
general election seats being vulnerable to the Lib Dems because of the collapse in Labour. I would normally agree, Steve, about um, you know, a, a politicians' resilience and capability of withstanding repeated blows, but Jeremy Corbyn is not in the normal category here, really, is he? I th have I got time? Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I think uh, he is in the sense that although he gets solace from winning leadership contests, anyone who leads a party into the kind of set up, it's not going to be that vivid because they're not defending all the key seats, but if they weren't, say, to win Birmingham, get slaughtered again by the SNP in Scotland, I, I, I think it will undermine what I suspect already is a fairly ambiguous sense of self-confidence. All right, we need to leave it there. John Curtis, thank you for that. Well, with those elections on the horizon, is Labour where it would want to be? Former leader Ed Miliband was on the Andrew Marr show earlier today. He explained the challenge Labour faces as it tries to connect with voters. It's easier for other parties. If you're the Greens or the Liberal Democrats, you're essentially fishing in the 48% pool. If you're UKIP, you're fishing in the 52% pool. Labour is trying to do something much harder, <laughs> which is to try and speak for the whole country. And by the way, that's another part of my argument. Our attack on Theresa May, part of it is she's ignoring the 48%. I think the sort of ignoring the verdict, let, going into this saying let's overturn it, I'm afraid looks like ignoring the 52%. We've got to speak for both. And by the way, I think there is more that unites Remainers and Leavers that, than might first appear because they share common concerns about the way the country is run. Joining me now, the Shadow Health Secretary John Ashworth. Welcome to the programme. Alistair Campbell told me on the BBC on Thursday that he's fighting to reverse the referendum result. Ed Miliband says that Remain needs to accept the result, come to terms with it. Who's right? Uh, we have to accept the referendum result. I mean, I campaigned very passionately to remain in the European Union. Uh, the city I represent, Leicester, voted narrowly to remain in the European Union. Sadly, the country didn't. We can't overturn that. We cannot uh, uh, be like King Canute trying to, you know, demand the tide go out. Uh, we've, had, we've had this democratic process. We have to accept it. We all voted to have a referendum in the, when the, legis the relevant legislation came to Parliament. We've just got to get on and make the very best of it now. How bad will the local elections be for Labour? Well, I hope they're not as bad as we've just heard, because that was a pretty depressing <laughs> presentation, wasn't it? Uh, look, I, I, I'm going to be entirely predictable and say, let's see where we get to on a, election night, when I'm sure I'll be uh, invited onto one of these types of programmes to give my uh, uh, analysis. I but think it'll be election day. Election yeah, day. Yeah, the following day, yeah. because there are some results we'll be covering on this week on the night, but most are coming out the next uh, day. But it does look like you could lose seats across the board in England, Scotland, Wales. Uh, what did you make of what Steve Richards said about the impact that could have on Mr Corbyn's leadership? Well, uh, we have to be winning seats. We cannot be falling back on the scales that have just been suggested. I mean, now, your, your package was quite right. These tend to be county council areas and stronger Tory, Tory areas. Tory leading areas. Yes. But generally, we've got to be winning in Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, Staffordshire, Lancashire, those types of places, mm -hmm. because they, they contain a lot of the marginal constituencies that decide general elections. The important places in this set of elections are towns like Hucknall, Beeston, Hena. These may be towns you might not have heard of, but these are marginal towns the in swing marginal... Seats. Exactly. In ma marginal towns in marginal swing constituencies. We've got to be doing well in them. So, look, we'll see where we are on election night, but my priority is to be campaigning hard in these areas over the next few weeks. A recent poll showed that even people who voted Labour in 2015 prefer Mrs May to Mr Corbyn as Prime Minister. Isn't that extraordinary? Well, I've not, uh, for, <laughs> fortunately for me, I've not actually seen that poll. I'll go and uh, look it up when I leave the studio. But look, it was we, the YouGov. Uh, okay, well, I, you know, I, I, you know, I'll go and look at the YouGov website. But it's important that we are winning the trust of people, and we've got to be working hard. I mean, that's you're not what even I, winning the but, trust but, of your own well, of we, the people who voted for you in 2015, know, according to this. And, and we've got to hold on to people who voted for us in 2015, and and we've got to be persuading people who voted for other parties to come to us. And one of the criticisms that I have of some of the debate and the discourse that goes on in the, the wider Labour Party, please don't misunderstand me, I'm not making a pointed criticism about any individual, but some of the debate you see on online, on Twitter and so on, suggests that if we want to get people who voted Conservative to switch to Labour, that is somehow a betrayal of our principles. 
It's absolutely not. I think it was Justin Trudeau who said Conservative voters are, our, are not our enemies, they're our neighbours, they're our relatives. We have to convince people in the classic seats like Nuneaton, Bury North, sure. Sherwood, to switch from voting Conservative to voting Labour, as well as increasing our vote amongst non-voters and Greens and so on. And that's the responsibility of all of us. But it seems like you have a mountain to climb, and the mountain is Everest, because there's another poll, I'm not sure whether you've seen this one, it shows that in London, which I'd remind you is the bastion of Labour now, is the bastion of the Corbyn, Corbynites, and it was a bastion of Remain, Mr Corbyn is less popular than even the new UKIP's Paul Nuttall. I mean, that's beyond extraordinary. Well, I don't know about that, Paul, but, but <laughs> the, most recent, that uh, the most recent set of elections <laughs> in London was, of course, that big mayoral election where Sadiq Khan, the Labour candidate, won yes. quite handsomely, taking yes. the seat off the Conservative. Oh, no, it wasn't the same Conservative candidate, but we took that mayor mayorality off a Conservative. Uh, so we've that done was well. We did, a year ago, wasn't well, it? well, we did well in London a year ago. We haven't and got any elections. You, and you had a non-Corbyn, we haven't got almost a, an anti-Corbyn candidate. Uh, uh, well, I think Sadiq uh, actually nominated Jeremy from memory. But anyway, I'll let <laughs> Sadiq uh, uh, position himself how, how he likes. Uh, but we haven't got elections in London uh, uh, in, in a couple of weeks' time. But our elections are in these county areas, and of course, those various mm. mayor, mayoral elections in Greater Manchester and uh, what about uh, the West Tuesday. Midlands? Yeah. I mean, that's the one that you look, you know, any normal year in mid-term as the opposition, Labour should win the West Midlands. John Curtis says it's nip and tuck. Well, there's all, the West Midlands has always been a slightly more uh, a swing region, but of course we want to do well in the West Midlands. We want, to be, we want to make sure that we are turning out a strong Labour vote in Dudley, Wolverhampton, uh, uh, play, you know, um, Walsall, those sorts of places, because they, will, they are key constituencies Indeed. for us in okay. the general election. Does Labour look like a government in waiting to you? Well, what I would say is, contrast where we are to what this Conservative government is doing. This Conservative mm. government is no, a... No, no, uh, you, you, I ask you about <laughs> Labour, you don't get to tell me about the Conservatives. <laughs> I'll ask again, does it look like a government in waiting to you? Well, we are... Uh, look, today... We are exposing the conser or reminding people that the Conservatives are breaking that 18-week pledge on waiting times, which is going to mean lots of elderly people with uh, waiting longer in discomfort and pain for hip replacements and cataract replacements and knee replacements. Yesterday, John Healy, our housing spokesperson, was exposing some of the shortcomings in the Help to Buy scheme. Angela Rayner, our education spokesperson, yeah. has been uh, campaigning hard against the cuts to schools. Tom Watson, our culture mm. spokesperson, has been campaigning hard against some of the uh, changes right. that the government wants to introduce there. And our shadow cabinet are working hard, holding the government's feet to the so fire. So does it look like a government in waiting? Yes. Took you three times to get to that. <laughs> oh, come on, of course. Uh, because we, we are... We are well, but, but look, there's a social care crisis. Uh, there's a school funding uh, issue, huge issue. For lots of areas, the NHS has just got through the winter and abandoning many of its targets. Yeah. You say you've been batting on all these issues. You're over. You're 18 points behind in the polls. No, we have to work harder. But uh, but we well, don't. What else can but, you but do? But we don't. But, uh, but we don't. You know, the, the opinion polls are challenging. Of course they are. But we are a great social democratic party of government. On Twitter today, there's lots of Labour activists celebrating that the national minimum wage has been, in, has been in place now for something like 16 years because we are in government. Look at all the great sweeping progressive changes that this country has benefited from, from the National Health Service to cultural changes to Sure Start Centres to an assault on child poverty because the Labour Party got itself in contention for government. So yes, I entirely accept that these polls do not make a, a thrilling reading for a Labour politician on a Sunday morning, but it means that people like me have to work harder because we are part of something that is bigger than any one individual. We're in the business of changing things for the British people and if we don't do that, if we do not focus on that, then we are letting people down. Is Labour preparing for an LA election? I see reports in the press of a four million pound war chest. Uh, yes, I understand. Well, I've read the report as well. But we've been on an election footing since uh, Theresa May became the Prime Minister. John Trickett, who was our general election coordinator at the time, indeed called for a general election. So we are, we are investing in staff, <coughs> we are investing in uh, the organisational uh, capability that we need. I mean, and I, I, by the way, our Labour Party staff do absolutely brilliant work. Okay. There's a bit of nonsense on Twitter having a go at them. They do absolutely tremendous work and, I have, and they are, whenever that election comes, they'll be ready. John Ashwell, thank you. And to answer that last question, I'm joined uh, from Salford by the Lib Dem leader, Alistair Carmichael.
Uh, so Mr. Farron says in the Observer today that the Lib Dems will replace Labour. How long is that going to take? Well, we'll have to wait and see. I think anybody who thinks that you can predict the future in politics at the moment is engaged in a very dodgy game. But I mean, I can tell you, Andrew, I'm in Manchester this morning because I've just been out here campaigning with the Liberal Democrat team in the Manchester Gordon Yeah, by I'm afraid you can't, uh, I can't, I, you well, mustn't I'll mention only, that. You know the by election rules. I offer only as, a, as an illustration no, that don't they offer are it as all. a cross you know, whole swathes of, of the country. The Liberal Democrats are back in business. Our tails are up mm. and, and, you know, we, we are out on the doorsteps. We're putting across our, our message and we're getting a good response. And, and part of the reason why that is happening is that the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn has taken just such a, a self-destructive path. But even if, as expected, you do pretty well in the local elections, you, all you're going to do really mm. is make up some lost ground from the time when you did very well in, uh, in, in previous times. It's four, you used to have 4,700 councillors. Mm -hmm. It's going to take well, you a long indeed, while look, to go back to, to that. You're getting no argument from me that we have got a mountain to climb. Um, what I'm telling you is, and if this is not just uh, in this round of elections, it's in the other by-elections that you've seen in places like Whitney and Richmond, uh, and in by-elections right the length and breadth of the country yeah. since, uh, since last June. Liberal Democrats taking seats from mm. the Labour Party as well as the yeah. Conservatives. Can we just... And not just in Brexit uh, phobic areas, if I can put it like that, not just in Remain areas, but in places like Sunderland as well, which voted very heavily for, for, for Brexit, because in fact the, that vote was in large part as well a, a protest against the way in which the Labour Party really has taken these areas for granted over the years. That's why the, the ground is fertile for us at the moment. But in the local elections, which is what we are discussing uh, mm -hmm. today, uh, why would anybody vote for the Lib Dems if they believed in Brexit? Because Mr. Farron's main aim is to reverse Brexit. Well, if you are a Brexit uh, supporter uh, and you are considering how to cast your vote in this election, then uh, first of all, I think you will be looking at the quality of representation that you can get for your local area. And I think you're right, we have got a lot of ground to recoup from previous elections. But in these elections where we lost, and we lost, you know, I think 124 seats the last time these seats were contested, communities have now had a few years to reflect on the quality of service that they've been able to get. Uh, and they have missed the very effective Liberal Democrat councillors that they have had. But, you know, no, this is not just about the, whether you're a lever or a remainer, because in fact, ultimately, that is a, an issue that we are going to have to settle, uh, and we will settle it not in the way that the government is having us do by them just dictating the terms of the whole debate, but by bringing the whole country together, which I think is something you can only do if, as we have suggested, you actually give the people the opportunity to have a say on the deal when Theresa May eventually produces it. The only way you could really replace Labour in the foreseeable future would be if a big chunk of the centre and right of the Labour Party mm -hmm. came over and joined you in some kind of new social democratic alliance. And there's no sign that's going to happen, uh, is it? it well, no, I mean, I, to be honest, I, I don't quite see where the common purpose is anymore that holds the Labour Party together. But look, that is for people in the Labour Party to, to make their own decisions. Um, I, I think, though, you know, you can see it and you saw what happened to the Labour Party in Scotland. Politics moved on, it left them behind, and they were absolutely decimated as a consequence of that. So was your it party. It is eminently possible that the same thing could now happen to the, the, the Labour Party yeah. in the rest of the United Kingdom, because politics is moving on, and they are coming up with 1970s solutions to problems in 2017. All right, Alice Carmichael, we'll leave it there. Thanks uh, Thank you. For, for joining us. I've been